Whether you're new to the MSP game or refining your support process, I want to walk you through what it really takes to deliver fantastic support that keeps clients happy. And that's truly the goal of this video. I want you to walk away with hopefully a little golden nugget. If you're brand new to the MSP game, this is going to completely set you up for massive success as you grow your business. How are you doing? My name is Harrison Barron from growth-generators.com. We help MSPs grow. We're going to teach you how to sell your services. We're going to teach you how to build leads and hopefully operate your business effectively. Before we get into today's video, if you could head over to growth-generators.com. And if you're looking for some resources, we have plenty of them. If you go into the resources tab up top, you can go grab any of our resources there. So Please feel free, go grab it. We have business plans for you. We have uh, we have our blueprint for you, our buyer personas for you. I mean, truly, there's a ton of free stuff, battle cards to teach you the right sales process, but we want you to succeed in your MSP business. Growth-generators.com forward slash resources. You'll find all the resources there. By the way, before I get into today's video, somebody was like, hey, the, the intro is a little long and Hey, until sponsors come and start handing me money, I got to self promote here and making this content while I do absolutely love it. I do have bills to pay and it is a business at the end of the day. And we have a program called MSP heroes. You can jump in there. It's full of tons and tons of value, but that's how we grow this channel. That's how this channel consistently remains the best out there. And I appreciate every single person for watching the entire video. And if you don't like it, just skip through the first minute or two, but for the real ones that stick around the whole time, I love you guys a little more than everybody else. So let's talk about providing managed services. What do managed services look like? And before we even get into managed services, because while that's all important, that is what we are actually delivering to people, we have to think about a couple things really quickly. The first thing is, is we have to understand what our clients' needs are. We can't come running to the rescue for our clients or potential clients if we don't actually know what they need. And that's really, really important. And we have a free onboarding checklist too at growth-generators.com forward slash resources. It's somewhere on here, but you could go through and grab the free onboarding checklist. There it is, right? The reason we have that is because we want to make sure that we onboard people correctly and we do our discovery calls understanding what's important to the business. What are the business's goals? What do they currently have as, have as a software stack? Is there anything that we can use our tech expertise to address. And truthfully, I think all this one kind of goes under the radar a lot is what are their pain points, right? You have to think about it. That person is making the decision to spend a lot of money every single month with you and come with that money comes probably a lot of thorns in their side that we are going to have to meticulously fix every single week forever and hopefully address them during that onboarding process. But they're more than likely coming to your MSP because they have some kind of thorn in their side, some kind of pain that they are currently dealing with. And it's important that as you go through this, you have to set clear expectations right off the rip, right? As soon as they sign over and they hand you money, you they should already have clear expectations of what they can expect during the onboarding, when you're going to be taking care of a lot of those thorns, all the way through to where you can provide actual support through that. So let's talk about the tools, right? We need a core stack of tools that we are going to end up using. Now, some of you guys probably already know this, but you need a RMM and PSA tool. I'm going to share my screen here. We have a but uh, one of my absolute favorite softwares out there, it's an RMM and PSA or PSA RMM platform. And there's a couple of them out there. There's SuperOps, one of my favorites, Atera, Synchro as the kind of combined best softwares in my opinion. But we also need a bunch of other tools. We might need tools like IT Glue, Hoodoo, e you have EDR, you have XDR, whatever it is, we have to find it. We or the technology specialists. We have to find the right stack to support our customers. Now that right stack, I say that, and I don't give too much context to it because you might be providing something very different th than the next person watching YouTube. You might be focusing on HIPAA compliance. Somebody else might be focusing on FERPA or FINRA. 
There are so many different things that would make it the right stack. It's the right stack for you and your business. But truth be told, you're going to need an RMM tool and a PSA tool. And as many of you guys already know, a CRM. But that's not so important for supporting your clients, right? You guys probably already know I absolutely love Go High Level. There's an affiliate link down below if you want to support the channel and you don't want to jump into MSP Heroes. I totally, totally get it. You can go grab that affiliate link down below and it does help us. But you have to figure out the right tools for your business. Do you care about the network and what it looks like? Okay, maybe Avic or Domotes is a great idea. Do you care a lot about cybersecurity? Maybe it's ESET or maybe it's uh, Acronis, backup for Acronis as well. I mean, truthfully, your stack matters for you and the business that you're trying to run, but you have to have the right tools. You can't go and do a job without having the right tools for endpoint detection, patch management, backups, all of that has to be done off the bat because that's our support to go help the client, right? We need that tool to actually do that kind of stuff. Now, before we actually go support the clients, we also need to create a support plan. Now, this should be pretty much defined in your SLA, your service level agreement. It's a part of your MSA, basically a master document, a master service agreement, crazy acronym, right? It's a part of that usually that shows the support tiers or what the customer is actually going to be getting. Is it 24 by 7 by 365 or 360? Is it 9 to 5 by 5 by 350, right? If you take a couple of days off during the holidays. But it's important to make sure that both you and the customer know the response times, the escalation paths or plans, right? What is after hours coverage? What is considered an emergency? Who's paying for emergency rates? And also outlining maintenance, patch scheduling, update cycles. All of those things should be clearly outlined in your SLA or even your MSA, depending on which one you have. SLA is a small part of an MSA. If you're just starting, just focus on the SLA for now. You can always add an MSA down the road. And then when you actually bring that customer on, right? You finish your onboarding, you get them all set up, you remove all those thorns out of their side. Customer is super happy. Now we can go out and do the support. And what I mean by remove those, those thorns, that's fixing the printer. That's making sure that so-and-so's computer can work the way that they want it or getting them a new computer that allows them to run AutoCAD or something like that or just making the technology that they have work so that they're happy with it. They probably spent a lot of money at one point on it. And then you have your support. Now, there's two types of support, and I only recommend one of them. There's proactive support, and then there's reactive support. Now, you're probably yelling at your screen saying, Harrison, I know you're going to say, don't do reactive support. And to that, I'd say, you're right, right? But we want to be proactive. And I joke around with that because that's our job is to be proactive when it comes to helping our clients. But what does proactive support really mean for an MSP? This is monitoring their environment, making sure things are going the way that they're supposed to be going. Automating as much as you possibly can. Some of you guys that I've had conversations with that follow this YouTube channel, automate everything. And let me tell you, I love it. And by the way, if you've made it this far, like button, subscribe button, notification bell, it helps the channel tremendously. And honestly, I really like seeing it. It makes me super happy. I'm not going to lie about that one. I get super excited when you guys watch a lot of videos, like them, comment on them, especially for the real ones that are like first on the video. Love you guys. So, we have to be proactive, right? We have monitoring, we have automations, scheduled reviews, scheduled maintenance, right? But we have to be proactive when it comes to making sure things happen, right? We want to make sure that our clients function the way that they want to work. And we are just helping them do that. That's really it. We aren't going crazy and just implementing new systems. Now, that might be very well a part of your onboarding or project that you end up doing, but they probably have technology that they just want it to work. And that is where you come into play. It's fixing those problems. It's bringing them into your environment through that onboarding, listening to what they need, 
and then support fixing those problems and then supporting them so that way they don't have a hack. They don't have connectivity issues. They don't have a printer that's driving them crazy and making them tear all their hair out, right? That's really what it's all about. It's about being proactive. Now, the less desirable MSPs focus on reactive, waiting for that customer to call. Now, there's always going to be unforeseen things or somebody wants something that isn't previously set up. In that case, they're going to pick up their phone, send you an email and say, hey, this isn't working. Look, we are good, but nobody is perfect. They're going to let us know. And that's okay. That's our job. They, we pick up the phone and we support them. And that brings me to support channels and some of the best practices out there for your MSP. You're going to need a ticketing system. Now, once again, that's going to be handled by your RMM and PSA tool, depending on which one you prefer, right? In this case, I like super ops. Once again, total, total choice. The super ops affiliate link is down below and I'm not an affiliate with them because they pay me money. I became an affiliate with them because I've mentioned them dozens and dozens of times for free. And I really, really like their software. I think it's really, really good. And you guys on the other end of the camera have been raving fans about it. So full transparency there. I see, sought out to be an affiliate. They didn't call me up one day. We're like, Hey, we love what you're doing. Um, would you like to, you know, make some money from us? No, that's not how it actually went, but we need a ticketing system. And this is how clients are going to submit their requests to you and your team to manage those requests. Those could be, once again, phone, email, chat support. Usually there's a link on your website that you could have somebody fill out and boom, it goes into your system. But we need to be able to see those problems in real time and address those problems as they come up. Now, we don't have to sort them out immediately, but once again, your service level agreement is gonna say how and when, what needs to be done, when it should be done, and then you have to meet or exceed those expectations that you've already laid out. And if you've made it this far, you know my little golden nuggets are at the end. Do yourself a look at me in the eyes. All right, we're going to have a moment here. Please document everything. Always, always, always be logging. If you are a new MSP, this is how you're probably going to manage your employees and seeing what's going on. But even if you're an established MSP, just document. Things are never going to go right. And that's kind of the point of why you have a job, right? So we have to make sure that we document things. So if something breaks, we have a database of information that we can then refer back to or knowledge base and say, boom, we can fix those problems fairly quickly. But we're just we're literally answering tickets and saying, hey, what's going on? That person on the other end of the phone says this, 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 this. And then we go and address those problems. I'm way oversimplifying it because some of those problems are going to make you tear your hair out. But that's truly what we're doing. And then we're just proactively monitoring and making sure that their system is working. It's up to date and it's patched. And then last but not least, right, we have to report what we're doing, right? At some point or another, the client is going to want to say, I'm spending thousands of dollars with you every single month. What are you guys actually doing here? And this is great because this gives you the opportunity to show some of your reports. Now, most RMM and PSA tools are going to share your uptime issues resolved, and you might need Domos or a network software, right? To show this kind of stuff, but you can also show ticket metrics, phone calls, the, the average time. There's a software called bright gauge that I've seen, and you can see how long people have waited on hold. All of those things are important because that is the data that customer is going to use to determine if you're doing a good job or a bad job, right? As well as just figuring out, hey, how long do things actually take? And then you can offer what is called a TBR, a technology business review. Now, some people do this as an ABR, an annual business review, a QBR, quarterly business review, a... However often you want to do it is up to you. I would say quarterly at most... Maybe monthly if it's going to be super, super quick, but it's just a check-in to let people know what's going on, what you're helping with, and how you're actually helping them do whatever they want to do. That's true because some clients, they just want to work and they want somebody to call and say, hey, this isn't working correctly. And then last but not least, we are going to continuously improve ourselves, but also the experience that our customers get. This is going to be client training, better communication and constantly focusing on improving all of it across the board. 
constantly be training your employees and your clients about phishing, common IT mistakes, right? Any new tech rollouts that you're going to have, as well as educating your clients on how to, re you know, to reduce support tickets truthfully. You want them to be smart, not dangerously smart where they can mess up your system, but we want to make sure that we improve their cybersecurity and also minimize the number of tickets that we get so we can increase our profits. Truthfully, right? That's what we're doing. And then during that time too, ask for some surveys, both to your existing employees and to your clients. What do you like? What do you not like? What could we be doing better? In many cases, this is also called a net promoter score or an NPS score, right? We want to see how much our clients enjoy what we're doing and how we're actually doing it. And hopefully that's going to give us great feedback to become a better business. That's really the goal. Feedback is super, super important. If you ever join an MSP Heroes membership call, I ask, was this helpful? Was this good? Did you guys enjoy this? Because I want to know if it's a topic I should go deeper in. It was enough. It was too little. It wasn't exactly what people found interesting because I want our members to truly have an amazing experience and become great net promoters, people that promote the heck out of our memberships because it does actually help them. So just a little quick recap here before I let you go. And once again, like, subscribe, notify. It really helps the channel. And once again, it truly makes me super excited, right? We have to do a thorough onboarding. I think people sleep on this all of the time. If you're not doing a great onboarding process, you're missing out on what the client's needs are, what their pain points are, and how you can truly help them. Get the right tools set up. An RMM tool and a PSA tool are the bare necessities for supporting clients. If you want to grow your MSP, you got to get a CRM. I like Go High Level, and I like Super Ops for your RMM and PSA tool, but there's plenty of great options out there. Feel free to pick. If you're not sure you want my feedback on something, jump in the Discord, growth-generators.com forward slash Discord. It's completely free. It's under the resources tab on our website, or leave a comment under the video. I will be happy to answer it. Sometimes I'm a little slow to answer things, but I'm usually pretty darn quick to answer people's comments. Build a service level agreement. Have something that tells customers and you the level of service that you're going to be providing. Because if you don't, you might get lazy and they're going to get pissed that they're spending money and you're not doing what they think you should be doing. It's got to be on paper and both parties, it's a contract, both parties benefit from it. Please be proactive. If you're reactive and your customer says, hey, I know that my MSP puts your stuff or watches your stuff, I'm going to find you and I'm going to yell at you. We have to be proactive. It's better for everybody out there. Find great support channels that work for you. If it's a ticketing system, if it's by phone, email, chat support, find what works for you and find your best practices. There are plenty of best practices out there. In many cases, I cover that on this channel and provide reports as often as you can. Not every day, but maybe on a monthly basis or quarterly basis and just continuous improvement throughout that entire process. And sure enough, you're going to have an incredibly successful MSP. But that is truly how you go out and you support your MSP clients. I know that's very simple because it's not that hard. The tickets that you get, those are going to be challenging. But actually going out and setting all of this up is not that hard. I believe in you. You've already landed on the right place on the right YouTube video. Now it's just carrying that football home. I appreciate the heck out of you guys. I love you guys as always. Thank you for watching another video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.